For today's video, we're back here in my hometown of Kapahulu. It's an iconic plate lunch place here in Kapahulu. And if you guys are local here, you guys know it. It was the old burger land. Oh man, can't forget about their desserts as well, guys. And it's more dessert. Literally, this is a dessert episode. Do you guys know? We had to get their iconic. If you had to get one thing from this place, it'd be this. What's going on foodies? Welcome back to the channel. And for today's video, we're back here in my hometown of Kapahulu and we're taking you guys along on our foodie adventure to Diamond Head Market and Grill. It's an iconic plate lunch place here in Kapahulu. Oh man, can't forget about their desserts as well, guys. Awesome. And you guys know we had to get desserts here. They're known for their cakes and their scones, so stay tuned and you guys can see everything. And if you guys are new here, I'm Amanda, this is Felix. We're a born and raised couple, local couple here on Oahu, and we're taking you guys along on all of our foodie adventures. And before we get into today's video, make sure you hit that subscribe button down below and give this video a big thumbs up. And let's get into today's video. Let's go, because we're starving. Wisconsin guys. <laughs> Thanks for watching us. For yeah, sure. For sure. We love you guys. You know, yeah. you guys, like what I said earlier, you guys made our uh, trip here to Hawaii, a trip come true, you know. Especially all the hot spots. Man, I love it. I love yeah, it. we're awesome. like we have to hit everything. Everything they eat we have to eat too. <laughs> Alright guys, so we had to go back into the car, keep it old school, OG, triple OG because it was a little too windy today. So we're actually here at Kapalona Park in Kamuki area. It's a place that I've been going to for years. Literally went to summer fun here, swimming lessons here. However, it's just so windy. We tried to set up a picnic table and literally our camera flew away. So we're eating in the car. Hope Look, you guys are okay with that. Luckily for my cat-like reflexes, I caught the camera. I caught it. What you about? I caught the camera. Anyway, let's get into today's food because we're starving and this just smells like oh so good like grilled meats literally and oh. you guys know we love grilled meats oh man so it's been a while since we had their plate lunches we usually just come for their dessert but yeah we weren't sure what to get so we got all the ones with the chef hat icon next to it which means recommended recommended <laughs> yeah if you're not sure look for the chef's hat so i got their surf and turf plate which is a lot of things on here so let's say we got terry beef their style of char seal pork terry chicken garlic shrimp and their garlic ahi seared garlic ahi with white rice the plates guys come with 
tossed salad. You can upgrade to potato mac, which we did for both plates, but they forgot on mine, unfortunately. And your choice of white or brown rice. And for my plate today, guys, I got a portobello mushroom burger plate with brown rice, and I upgraded to the mac salad because they forgot theirs. Now I have to share mine with him. Oh, I guess so. <laughs> anyway, yeah, supposedly they use like a special kind of gravy for this um, hamburger steak, so mm. try it out. Looks like it's supposed to be a burger, but they made it into a plate lunch. Pretty much. But that portobello thing is huge. Hamburger steak is yeah. one of my favorite things to get on any menu. Mm. I kind of want to try yours, to be honest. Mmm, it's good. Mmm. -hmm. Mmm. Mmm. Nice and beefy and charry. Wow. And I taste like some onion. I think because it's sautéed with onions too. Mm. The brown rice is kind of dry, but I mean, it's brown rice. What mm. can you expect? Well, I got the really good charred piece, the burnt onion. edge. I kind of wish they put the... Looks like there's grilled onions on there. I kind of wish they put that on top of the patty. You know, like a hamburger steak, but it looks like it's hidden under there. Nice flavors though. Their gravy, you can tell, is made from scratch. It ain't no packet gravy, y'all know what I mean. Pretty good, yeah. I would say, I, I would say it's, it's a pretty good hamburger steak plate. And the true test right here is the potato mac. I kind of wish I had one. The sauce on this is kind of sweet too, yeah. Wow, potato mac is awesome. It's good. That mushroom though, it makes it a signature, I believe. I mean, just look at that thing. Mmm. 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 Soaked up some of that gravy too. Mm. I feel like mushroom. I kind of wish they put more gravy too. The flavor is good though on that. Mm. The potato mac salad, it's kind of fresh tasting because it has like these cucumbers in here. It's really eggy too, yeah? yeah like they use the hard boiled eggs, you know, to mix it up. It's very creamy, very savory. Thumbs up on that potato salad. Mm. Let me try some of that char siu pork. This is interesting. I've never seen it like thin cut like this before. Really interesting. I'm gonna try. Yeah. I really wish they gave us knives, but they only gave us forks, so it's like... You know. Yeah, a little bit difficult to eat, guys. We're gonna go a little caveman today. Very... I don't know how to describe it. Chinese flavor. <laughs> yeah? It's kind of like sweet, sour almost flavor. Mm. Really thinly sliced. That's actually pretty good. <laughs> you like that? It has like that, that Chinese, like, chashu taste. Yeah. But it's not like a thick piece of chashu. I kind of like that it's a thin piece. You guys know I like my thin cut meats. So this place, Diamond Head Grill, it's located on Montserrat. It's kind of on the corner of Montserrat and Campbell in the Kapuhulu area. And like I said before, guys, if you're from that area or if you've just been in Hawaii for a while or you're local here, you guys know that used to be the old burger land and that used to be my jam when I was a kid. The terry beef is actually pretty good here. Oh, really? Amanda does not like terry beef. but I'll this, try it. Yeah, but this is pretty good. I'll try a little bit. I will say. I guess because it's so thin too. It's like not as chewy, you know what I mean? It's not tough and chewy. I really like that sweet soy glaze on that terry beef. It's actually not bad. It's not bad, right, for terry beef? Yeah. I mean, it's not my favorite thing because I usually don't like terry beef, but that one's not bad. Try a garlic strip. Kind of wish there was a, like more garlic butter on this, but it looks um, like it's nicely charred though. It has some charring even on the garlic strip. You guys can take a look at that. Mm. Some nice color, nice char. Mmm. I'm not sure because I got the surf and turf, so it's a little bit of everything, but fell short of everything. Does that make sense? I feel like if you order their individual respective plates, it would have been better. But because I'm getting a tasting, I don't get the full experience. Like the shrimp has really good texture. I wish there was more garlic. I'm pretty sure that garlic shrimp plate has a lot of garlic. Mm, I'm going to try some of that seared ahi. Let me try the garlic too. Oh, this is like a lemongrass seared ahi. Oh, that's interesting. It's nice, not too overly charred. I mean, not too overly seared, where it's like tuna can quality, you know what I mean? Still got a nice chew from that ahi. And it has really nice lemongrass flavor on the ahi. Not expect that. So I'm far, I think the best thing is the hamburger steak plate Amanda got. That's really good. I am enjoying my plate, guys. Now, mushroom is just grilled to perfection, guys. Let's see if their terry chicken is good. Mm. Mm, terry chicken, not bad, too. Nice, not too overpowering marinade on the terry chicken. The integrity of the chicken is still intact. More on the sweet side, though, the glaze. If you like the sweeter glaze, terry chicken, this will be up your alley. I can see this terry chicken in a meal prep. You're trying to cut clean boat, get this terry chicken. You guys already know when you hear the fizz. It's that time. I will say Diamond Head Grill is pretty good for what it is, but I think I would still rather go to Rainbows. I know you guys are waiting for us to put out that Rainbows video, but guys, it's so much pressure. Rainbows is so iconic. You all know we love Rainbows. Just wait for it, okay guys? Stay tuned because it's going to come out one of these days. I will say though, for me, Diamond Head Grill was always more about the desserts. 
Hmm. So, guys, definitely stay tuned for that. I taste some wasabi in this seared ahi, too. It's like a wasabi soy with lemongrass. Am I tripping? Weird. <laughs> oh, grated wasabi. That's what it is. But yeah, I think it's grated wasabi, not lemongrass. I apologize. I'm gonna kind of show you guys. You guys can take a closer look at that. The seared ahi is actually pretty good. Oh, I didn't try your chicken. Oh, yeah. Mmm. No? Your like I feel like good. I feel like everything is like not too bad. It's just I'm not sure which one I would crave. Unless you guys want to sample all the proteins like I did and get the surf and turf. Otherwise, right as of now, I'd recommend the terry chicken and that seared ahi thing. That thing is surprisingly good. I also saw they had kalbi short ribs there too. Some kind of barbecue rib plate. Those sounded good. Oh, and a new ribeye plate. That sounded good too. But I feel like we always do that. We always get kalbi. We always get steak. Those are like tried and true. We kind of just wanted to get something that's more known to them. And their surf and turf, that was like the first thing on the menu. I felt like this is like a sampling of what they have to offer. I do wish the portions were a little bigger though. Mmm. God, look at that. Man. Nah. Did I spend too much time talking again? And on a serious note, um, we kind of wanted to talk about like living in Hawaii and being a local here. I feel like because now we have a platform, we should probably not assume that everyone knows about what it means to live in Hawaii. So as you guys know, me and Felix, we are not of Hawaiian descent. So there's a, a clear and a big difference between being Hawaiian, which means native to this island, native to the Hawaiian islands, and being a local on this island there's a big difference okay guys so being hawaiian means that you have native hawaiian blood we don't we are called locals here on hawaii and hawaiian culture and local culture it's kind of honestly intertwined so i'll talk about that in a little bit but so hawaiian culture is the hawaiian language the hawaiian traditional dancing religion like that kind of thing and obviously on this channel we don't really talk about that kind of stuff because we're talking about food and there's also yes of course hawaiian traditional food and then there's also local culture where back in the plantation days when all sorts of people from all over the world japanese people chinese people portuguese people puerto Rican people, Filipino people, Spanish people, all kinds of people came to the Hawaiian Islands to work on the plantation field and that is where the local culture began. A melting pot, a mixing of all these different cultures all together and that is what is the local culture of today. And yes, Hawaiian culture is intertwined into that. And when we talk about that, it's kind of like if you guys are from here, you know, when you were growing up, did you sing Hawaii Pono E? You did, right? Ever since we were kids, we learned all about Hawaiian culture. Since elementary school, when they were teaching us how to write English, they were also teaching us the Hawaiian alphabet as well. So if you went to public school here, you guys know, here in Hawaii, we learn all these things from small kid time when, you know, we learn how to hula dance, we learn how to play ukulele, all those things. So we're not saying that we are Hawaiian at all. It's just so intertwined in the local culture yeah basically what amanda's trying to say guys is difference between hawaiian native culture and local hawaii culture so local hawaii culture to me is kind of like whatever culminated throughout the plantation era melting pot of different cultures combining coming together producing delicious foods and just the culture like pigeon that was from plantation era and hawaiian culture guys is like the natives like when you think of like lao lao squid luau Kalua pork, all the Hawaiian cuisines, instruments they use, like the ukulele, the ipu, you know, that's Hawaiian native culture. At one point, yeah. like... Their chants. Yeah, at one point, Hawaiians were not able to, like, they were pretty much restricted from using their language, like, talking about their culture and stuff. So when we're kids, like, we learn about their history. We learn about the native people that used to live here so that when we get older, we can teach our kids and we can, you know, malama the aina and do all these things, right? But yeah, to sum it up, it's just when you say you're from Hawaii, that doesn't make you a Hawaiian. Like, if you're from Texas, that makes you a Texan. It doesn't work that way. Hawaiian is a native to this island, so that's different. And when we say we're locals, it's because we grew up in this local mixed culture of all these different things. So I'm just gonna leave it at that, and we're gonna get into dessert because we gotta show you everything. All right, you guys already know Amanda segment. So Diamond Head Grill guys, they're known for their desserts and they're not messing around. We got a couple of their signature items today. So the first thing that we got was this Diamond Head Market and Grill Tort and 
it looks awesome guys we have no idea what is in there but there's literally like five layers of things right one two three four five layers so we wanted to try it on camera for you guys i can smell chocolate peanut butter banana and of course that thick whipped cream layer there okay. we just saw it was, it was the thickest thing they had so we got it. <laughs> i also really like their pumpkin crunch too here but we wanted to change it up you know what i mean so right off the bat so if you guys are counting four layers your eyes aren't wrong you're correct the fifth layer is the banana and it fell it kind of fell off into there it's like a huge chunk of banana mm. try with the banana the banana okay Ooh, guys, that's good. You know what it reminds me of? It reminds me of like a chocolate banana peanut butter smoothie without the ice and it literally tastes like a smoothie in a bite. There's like a chocolate brownie layer, a cookie layer, a pudding layer that's with like the banana and whipped cream. All right, here's my, my tort layer bite right here, guys. It's a manly dessert bite. Who says men can't enjoy their desserts? Mmm. Man, this is good. Mmm. Mmm. Mm -hmm. It's not a brownie. It's like an Oreo cookie. It's an Oreo crust on the bottom, guys. So Oreo mm. crust, nice thick whipped cream, chocolate mm. fudge, banana, and smooth peanut butter. Like mm. this thing is so smooth and textural. I can't tell if the peanut butter is the creamy thing or is the peanut butter the the crunchy layer. Yeah, guys, that tort is so delicious mm, this is good we should save room though because we got a lot more dessert coming up today is more of a dessert episode and we also got this lemon cake right yep and you guys know how we love our tartiness this lemon cake is so soft and literally like pillowy like kind of like angel cake but i'm gonna try this for the first time whoa oh that oh thing my. looks fluffy it look, mm. thing looks like the inside of like a sweet bread you know guys this is so good it's not heavy at all it's so light it's like two pieces of angel cake and then in the middle there's a lemon cream maybe and then on top and on the sides all over the cake is this like really light whipped cream and then covered with some kind of like caramelly nuts or i don't know i, don't know. I tried to take a nice bite for you guys to show you guys literally so fluffy and it's not heavy at all it's so light and fluffy wow and that lemon that it's like a hint Ooh. of lemon it's not like overly powering Ooh. that lemon sneaks up on you only the middle guys only the middle layer of the cake has the lemon you guys know what i'm talking about so it kind of sneaks up on you you get the creaminess on the top from the whipped cream once again the crunchy bits what is that it crushed something crunchy on there but that crunchy bit and then you meet the nice fluffy cake part of it it's like butterscotch brittle or something the crumbles mm. that's what it tastes like so butterscotch <laughs> butter crotch uh, butterscotch brittle crumble on top whipped cream fluffy cake and then the secret lemon layer and that lemon is not super tarty like the the alley lemon tart that one is like more if you want to get a punch because it's mm, very lemony but this one is nice smooth lemon flavor yeah it's like an angel cake type like if angels were yellow it'd be this that, that was actually really good i should have given my man to that one but guys you guys know we had to get their iconic this is their tried and true if you had to get one thing from this place it'd be this their blueberry cream cheese scone. This thing is no joke. This is like our favorite thing. Sometimes we'd come here just to get this. So guys, growing up in Kapahulu, you guys know that this was my jam back in the day. It still is though. Like, just look at that. It's gorgeous. Oh my goodness. This thing is enormous. You guys need to get this. Do yourselves a favor, go down now get this and this is not just your crumbly scone this is a moist cream cheese blueberry scone i'm gonna say it again cream cheese blueberry scone chef kisses it's literally the best scone in the world i will say you gotta get a piece of cream cheese but it's all there in the middle i can't get it this thing is like the poster child for all scones out there oh my god like seriously nowadays because of you know the whole covid thing when you grab your scones it's in this um it's in this paper bag thing but back in the day the trick was you look for the one with the most cream cheese because that's going to be a creamy cheesy blueberry bite in every bite mm. 
Mm-hmm. That's so good. We can stop right here because that's all you guys need to know. Blueberry cream cheese scone, diamond head market grill. It's so moist. Abundant amount of blueberries in here. And they have like a nice glaze on the top. It's like a sugary glaze. It makes it even more moist and more sugary and just a sweet treat, you know? Oh good. Most favorite desserts ever. It's one of these. A nice coffee in the morning. Start your day right. Literally, before when I used to work in Waikiki, I would go out of my way just to go to Diamond Head Grill, get this scone for breakfast, and take it to work to drink with my coffee. Hmm? To eat with my coffee. Luscious, blueberry flavors, moist, not crumbly scone, and of course, the smooth and rich cream cheese to round it all out. Oh man. If I recall correctly back in the day, the cream cheese used to be more like distributed throughout the scone. Mm -hmm. But nowadays it's like clumped up into one, like one section. You guys can see it. For some reason, it's only in one section. Like if this was a nine, back in the day it was like a ten and a half. And guys, we have to stop short here because we actually have a surprise for you guys. And it's more dessert. Literally, this is a dessert episode, but this is gonna be our first unboxing. So we have something really cool to share with you guys. One of our subscribers reached out to us and they have a small business out in California. LA. LA in Los Angeles area and they reached out to us and they wanted us to try some of their awesome cookies so we're gonna unbox that for you guys today and as you guys know all of the information will be linked down in the description bar so definitely check it out if you have any questions but we want to show you guys exactly what we got yeah guys do let us know if you have small a small business that's food related we don't mind trying it out for you guys on camera so this company is called chisai cakes so chisai in japanese actually means small and their story is pretty cool because the owner and operator i guess he started off in the culinary world working his way up and eventually he thought why not express my love for cooking through pastries because to him it's like a work of art isn't the packaging awesome guys <clears throat> that's him right there oh, but uh, oh, oh name on wow, there. look at that it even has our name on it, guys. Wow, I feel so special. Thanks, Brandon. Ooh. Ooh. Wow, you see that? The packaging is awesome. Oh, man, look at the nice. The box is nice and glossy, too. I really like, this is like a perfect gift, guys. Look at that. It's like a little mini waffle thing. That's super cute. Uh, so it looks like we have three different flavors here. Is that the chocolate one? I'm this not even like sure. Red velvet. I'm not even sure what the flavors are. Ooh, oh, that, I think that's the Oreo cheesecake. On their site, he said uh, one of their renowned flavors or one of their most popular favor flavors is Oreo cheesecake. So I think that's it right there. This looks like the OG. Oh, it's uh, macadamia nut pineapple, I think. Ooh. Even the card is cool. Look at that. <laughs> like a clear uh, you guys can't really see it but it's a clear business card so these are the these are the, the cookies so we'll be trying one of each for you guys on camera and just to be clear this isn't a paid promotion he just wanted us to try his cookies and kind of review them for you guys overall i'm impressed with the packaging already i really really want to try this one. Ooh, the waffle the waffle, the waffle looking one, one. Mm -hmm. i do wish they had the flavor on here though like what flavors each one is. Ooh, I smell cinnamon. Ooh. Yeah. Mmm. Nice. Very moist. Whoa. Mm. That cinnamon flavor. It's cinnamon. Yeah? It's like a very pronounced cinnamon flavor on the inside. A little cinnamon filling in the cookies. Mmm, that was really good. That one, I mean, tastes like very festive. I can imagine drinking that. It's almost like gingerbread. There yeah. you go, gingerbread moist cookie. Next. That's my tip on. I think this is the pineapple something. Pineapple macadamia. Kind of on the harder side. Ooh, it smells very buttery. Mmm. Okay. Full of macadamia nut. Mmm. All right. This one is really local tasting. <laughs> yeah. Like it tastes like Hawaii. Like we have a Honolulu cookie company here. This tastes like one of those cookies from it. Mm. I do wish the texture was a little better on that one. Like a more shortbread-ish cookie. Yeah, but let's try this one. I know this is their signature. Oreo cheesecake swirl cookie. Yeah, I think me and Felix, we're both more a uh, chewy cookie kind of person. So let us know down below. Are you guys also chewy people or do you like crunchy cookies? Let us know. 
Ooh, this does smell like cheesecake. Ooh. Oh yeah, this is a chewy cookie. Mmm. Yup, chewy, gooey. I like also that it's not too sweet. Like all these cookies are not overly sweet. Almost like tea cookies. Yeah. Okay. And last but not least. This one looks it. like a chocolate covered one, yo. Yeah? No, it's red velvet. It's oh, is it? literally red. I can't see. It's getting kind of dark, guys. Look at that. Red velvet. Ooh. I'm getting so full, guys. Ooh. Ooh. Oh. Ooh. This is a nice and moist cookie. Oh. I felt it. The moment I cracked it open, I felt it. It was moist. It was so moist. Oh, goodness, guys. Whoa. Literally. Ooh. It smells so chocolatey, too. Mmm. Mmm. This is my cookie right here. Are you sure this is red velvet? It tastes like chocolate fudge. Man. Honestly, this tastes like a brownie, but yeah. a cookie brownie. What's in there? Oh my god, there's like chunks of white chocolate? Yeah. Dang. Oh man. No. I don't know, I did that back. It might be between this one or the Oreo cheesecake swirl. Top two guys. Can't go wrong with either one. If you can get your hands on these cookies. So we want to give a shout out to Cheesecake Cakes. Thank you so much. We're so happy that you reached out to us and we got to try your cookies. Thank you. They're awesome. Definitely They're check them out. Cheesecakes.com. That was epic desserts on today's episode, guys. Thank you guys so much for coming along with us on today's food adventure. We had a lot of fun. It was really great meeting Koo and Daroni. You guys are the cool ones. But anyways, guys, as always, make sure you guys check the description box down below. We'll have everything linked down there. And also, if you like this type of content, make sure you hit that subscribe button and give this video a big thumbs up as well. Oh. Yep. And thanks again for coming along with us. We had a really great day and we hope you guys did too. Thank you so much and we'll see you guys on the next video. Take it easy. Bye guys.